Typically, when you look critically at art galleries today and in the past, there's criticism of the white cube, which is a male dominated space. You know, if you think about a gallery, you know, what color is coming into your head? You, you see the room and it's white and prestigious and the work grand on the wall, and that's fine. But those spaces have um, been a bit limiting historically. So here, although our walls are white, it's a more open space. We're not looking at, oh, what kind of schooling does this artist have? Or it's, it's just much more, like there's a different kindness to a space like this. Eastern Edge was founded by a group of artists. Uh, years ago, and so you have artists that built a space like this, right? Artists who run a space like this. So it's just members of the community that do art and they got together and like, let's make a space for people. And that same kind of energy and vibe has continued to carry over to today. My name is Rachel Gilbert, and I am now the uh, person who was responsible for resident artists and for a new project which works with digital media. I'm interested in accessibility and inclusion and um, being involved with the community. My name is Ashley Hemmings and I'm the executive director of Eastern Edge, very newly. <laughs> this space has primarily always been led by women and queer people. Um, so our mandate has always worked to back up those values, so highlighting feminist art practices, queer art practices, racialized artists, that's always been the core of what we want to do as an organization. There are two exhibition spaces within the gallery, the main gallery and the Rogue, and the Rogue is specifically for emerging or experimental local projects, um, so that serves as a space where um, emerging artists who maybe haven't exhibited work before can, can try something new, can experiment, can have an exhibition for the first time. The main gallery usually shows work from visiting artists, so that serves as a space where we can bring someone into the community who can teach a new skill set or a new type of work, new ideas, can introduce that to the local community. This exhibition is called Late for Life, Chapter 2, Previously Loved by Xenia Lucy Laffoli. She did a residency here before the exhibition. So all of the work that you're going to see in the gallery, she made in six weeks. Xenia's practice combines the traditional language of textile work with the contemporary aesthetic of digital photoshopped paintings, creating hybrid pieces that question hierarchies between art, design, and crafts. She creates a lively, sentimental reappropriation of issues related to domestic space, intimacy, queer love, and self-fiction. Our gallery, it's not a commercial gallery, so we don't, we don't sell art. We have no, no hand in the sale of art. So it's really a space where artists can think about um, doing larger installations, doing experimental work, uh, video work, sound work, work that doesn't have to be able to be packaged and sold or shipped easily. Um, so there's a lot of flexibility for thinking about collaboration, inventive ways of installing something. So my name is Emily Jan. I have no official position at the gallery normally, but I'm an uh, artist in residence for this five weeks. I have done an exhibition here with them before, so it's my second time at Eastern Edge. The things that look like big rocky crags poking out of the ocean on this image are actually burnt pieces of wood from the various shipwrecks that have happened off the coast here. And I've been working with a curator at the rooms to access those collections in the, in the sort of behind the scenes. 
and photograph them and I'm using them as my reference. This is ink that I made from berries that I collected the last time that I was here in, on the island of Newfoundland, which is the fall berry harvest, um, and I made ink out of it. And yeah, so I brought it back to work with it here on the walls. They've given me a tremendous amount of freedom, I think, in time to be able to workshop through uh, ideas and tests and, and just, you know, sometimes when you're working towards production for a specific exhibition all the time, it can be hard to take like artistic risks in that um, moment because you're like, there's a date I have to deliver, they expect a certain thing from me. So being able to give artists that space to kind of explore and play and, and be, you know, sometimes public and sometimes like private and have the time to do that is really, it's, it's a special thing to be able to do. I feel like Eastern Edge does a, a really, really good job of being not just um, an arts hub, but really like a, like a community anchor. I feel like because Eastern Edge is the oldest and the best established, I think, artist-run institution of any sort <laughs> on the island, that they really do an amazing job of making all of those connections, I think. And uh, they have their own festivals, of course, like Hold Fast and, and everything that they're responsible for themselves, but they also really partner uh, with a lot of other stuff happening in the community. And I just feel like it just creates this web of just, you know, energy, basically. As far as community involvement, well, I mean, we have people that host events here. We have other community organizations like Lanya Vanya. Their 12th uh, music festival is next week in Eastern Edge, and there's workshops, and so it's great. So there's a lot of collaboration in a space like this. We think a lot about how we can get racialized people and people who don't normally come here into our space. So we do a lot of um, events and community partnerships with other local organizations, with the idea being that, um, you know, someone might come to the gallery for an event who might not feel comfortable coming to the gallery just as an art gallery. Um, so we try to think a lot about how the gallery can be more accessible. I was the project lead for the Artists of Tool for Change project this past year. So basically it's looking at art, a universal language, and um, how do artists use their work to generate interest and spark critical dialogue around social issues like anti-racism, uh, xenophobia, um, transphobia, queer rights, uh, land back movements, so things like that, right? A space like this is, and a project like that, is about providing opportunities for other artists to share their work, be paid appropriately, and um, have their voice heard, you know. There's really no point in doing any of these things if we just sit in here alone and do them. <laughs> and don't show anybody and don't ever bring anybody in and don't put it back out into the world. The purpose of the gallery to me is a space for people, a safe space for people to learn and explore new ideas through visual language. And of course, it's not all visual. You have like audio art, you know, text, and it's a space for people to connect through art and learn new things and meet new people who have similar interests and you know, yeah, it's, it's important. People are like, oh, it's just art. And some of that contemporary art is silly. And it's like, well, is it, you know, I mean, sure it is sometimes, but what's wrong with being silly? <laughs> Especially in a adult world and you turn on the news and stuff sometimes. And so it's, it's also an escape in a way as well.